Hey everybody, welcome to Hands-On Auto Training. Uh, today we got a 2003 Chevrolet Silverado 3500. Uh, I think this is an HD with an 8.1 liter. It's got a misfire. This thing is running rough. I want to go ahead and take you along on my uh, diagnostic thought process here. So first of all, we always have to duplicate the customer concern. In this instance, this thing was running so poorly in the shop, not to mention that it was halfway tore apart, I didn't feel safe taking it on the road for fear of getting stuck or damaging the catalytic converters. The next step in our diagnostic process should be to check all the codes in a vehicle. I still argue with technicians all the time, but I check codes in all the uh, modules. We have a scan tool, we can push the button, one shot does it all. It'll give us a wealth of information and possibly give us some insight into other systems on a vehicle that might be uh, related to what we're dealing with. So you can see here, uh, we had the P0300 and everything else that we had uh, were history codes and not necessarily related to our engine misfiring. And since we're already here with our scan tool hooked up, I think it's a great idea just to go ahead and take a look at the misfire data. And scrolling around here, you guys can see clear as day, number three and number seven, racking it up. That's where our problem is in cylinder number three and number seven, both on bank one. At this point, I thought it would be a good idea to go ahead and take a visual inspection underneath the hood of this thing, make sure nothing's out of sorts, nothing uh, jumping out. Uh, that's part of our diagnostic process. And I saw a lot of stuff going on, but nothing uh, obviously causing the problem right now. This vehicle was running so poorly, and uh, such a it felt like a dead miss. Uh, the next step in my brain was to do a relative compression check, but not with any instruments, just with my ear. And uh, I just put this thing to the floor, wide open throttle, crank it over, clear flood mode. The cranking cadence sounded really good to me. I didn't hear anything uh, that made me want to pursue uh, the route of going mechanical at this point. So we're back to looking at the scan tool data to see if we can get a direction with this thing. Uh, this is idling and revving it up a little bit. Check out the O2 sensor voltages. We are really lean bank one sensor one. This is a big problem. So now I got a lot of the direction really quickly here. Looking at this vehicle, I back probed each injector and I also use a current ramp uh, or current clamp to test the current to each injector and each injector looked the same on bank one. Also, I looked at the injector voltage pattern and I did see a pintle bump on all four injectors on bank one. So that led me to put my WPS sensor on here and do a test. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and do the uh, special function of the injector balance test. Fuel injector balance. And we'll follow the instructions here, okay. And we're gonna go to injector number one. Okay, injector number two. You're not going to see the amperage on this because I'm not, the amp clamp is not on the fuse that goes to bank two. We'll go injector number three. This is our problem, child. And injector number four. Injector number five. Injector number six. And injector number seven, this is our other problem injector. And fuel injector number eight. Okay. 
So you can clearly see that we have an imbalance in our injector flow. Uh, number two and number seven were the worst of them. I had done this test before I filmed it and they were actually dropping less pressure before. Apparently buzzing the injectors freed up some of the gunk that was inside of them. I told a customer I'd recommend replacing all eight injectors and also before you do that do a fuel sample test make sure we don't have contamination in the tank. Um, they called back. They did just uh, replace two injectors and sent it down the road. It was all good. So thanks a lot for watching. Like and subscribe. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you uh, have any questions or concerns, leave them in the comments below. Check out HandsOnAutoTraining.com.